Surabaya. The city is full of greenery and is filled with the smiling faces of people. Let's study what you can do in your town by watching the efforts that people in Surabaya have made to reach this stage. Waste generation has been on the rise annually in many developing countries as a result of rapid urbanization and economic development. The majority of waste in these countries is disposed of in final landfill sites. However, because a large part of this waste has not been treated properly, it taints groundwater, generates foul odors, and has an adverse effect on the surrounding environment. Additionally, the rotting waste produces methane gas, a type of greenhouse gas, and contributes to the ongoing march of global warming. Locating suitable sites for final landfill becomes more difficult every year, as this type of troublesome facility is seldom welcomed by residents in the surrounding areas. Even when a new facility can be constructed, it is often located in a remote area a number of kilometers away from the city center, which results in the local government bearing the cost of transporting waste to the site. In this way, for many cities in developing countries, the problems regarding waste are both a major environmental and an economic issue. In particular, the pressure on final landfill sites, as well as the rising expenses that must be paid for treatment and collection transportation costs, can be a source of distress. Consequently, in order to lessen the load of this responsibility, the amount of waste generated must be controlled and the reuse of resources and recycling should be promoted. Looking at the composition of waste here, in general we can see that half or more than half of the waste generated in many developing countries is organic waste, including household kitchen waste. Therefore, the proper treatment and recycling of this organic waste can substantially control the generation of waste and will lead to the improvement of the environment. There are various ways that organic waste can be processed, including as feed, compost, biogas, and carbonization. However, here we shall take a look at the most commonly and inexpensively practiced method, composting. In organic waste composting, microorganisms break down kitchen waste, pruned branches and leaves from parks and roadside trees, for example, to change the waste into useful compost. While there are various types of composting methods, the city of Kitakyushu, the Kitakyushu International Techno Cooperative Association, Kaita, and the Institute for Global Environmental Strategies, IGES, recommend the adoption of a composting technique which can create compost with highly efficient soil improving benefits in about two weeks using seed compost produced from locally available fermented foods and rice bran. In this technique, composting can be carried out at households and small facilities in a short period of time and organic waste can be quickly treated near the source. This technique using these types of microorganisms is widely practiced in the city of Surabaya in Indonesia and has resulted in the widespread reduction of residual waste. This composting technique, the Takakura method, is named after the technical expert of the same name from the JPEG Wakamatsu Research Center in Kitakyushu City, who has refined the method to adapt to the city's climate and natural features. For more information on the Takakura composting method, please refer to the JICA educational material, the Takakura composting method. Let's now look at the details of how waste was substantially reduced in Surabaya. With a population of 3 million, the city of Surabaya is the second largest city in Indonesia after the capital of Jakarta and is a commercial and industrial center in eastern Indonesia. This is what Surabaya looked like in 2001. 
At that time, due to the closure of the Kaputi final landfill site located in the city center, as a result of protests by surrounding residents, the city was unable to collect household waste, and the streets and waterways within the city overflowed with garbage. With the situation moving out of control, the city accelerated the work on the Benowo final disposal site being constructed in the suburbs and continued until it could be used. This opportunity raised public awareness on waste issues with independent waste separation, waste reduction, and composting of organic waste carried out by communities, residential groups, and NGOs. Looking at the composition of waste generated in Surabaya, we can see that over half is organic waste. Taking this into consideration, the authorities in Surabaya City actively recommended the promotion of composting for kitchen waste and pruned branches and leaves. This map shows the location of composting centers in Surabaya. These centers have increased in number each year. Currently, there are 16 centers throughout the city which mainly carry out composting of pruned leaves and branches from parks and roadsides, as well as vegetable waste from markets. In line with this, the Surabaya city authorities distribute composting containers to households free of charge in order to promote composting activities of organic waste by local families. The city distributes 2,000 to 5,000 containers each year, and the number distributed now totals over 17,000. As a result, the city has seen an increase in waste separation at source and a reduction in the total amount of waste disposed at the Binowo landfill site each year. In the past five years, the city has seen a decrease of 30%. These impacts are visible in various areas. For example, with the use of composting containers at each household, organic waste can now be treated under sanitary conditions, and there has been a visible reduction in the number of harmful insects, such as cockroaches and flies. This has resulted in the improvement of the health of families. In addition, roads have been greened by using the compost produced to grow garden and house plants. There are also residents who sell the produced compost or grow agricultural products and medicinal herbs to supplement their income. Organic waste separation promoted the separation of dry waste such as paper and plastic. It has led to the creation of recycling centers where separated wastes are purchased. There are also people who sell different handicrafts made from plastic waste, such as bags, umbrellas, and notebook covers. As well, there are schools that utilize composting and recycling activities in their environmental education activities. Composting centers have generated new employment opportunities. The compost produced at composting centers is used in parks and for roadside trees, transforming the city into a lush green area. This has resulted in an increase of 7 hectares 10 in park coverage over the past five years. In this way, Many people have worked together in a multi-tiered fashion to reach the great achievement of reducing the amount of waste treatment by 30% through mutual cooperation. Kitakyushu City and Kaita offered their cooperation in these initial stages to launch a model project in the community of Kampong Rungkat Lor. Working with Pus Dakota, an NGO connected with the university in Surabaya, the NGO operated the composting center which treats the separated organic waste from the community and distributed household composting containers to community residents. These endeavors have resulted in the community's transfiguration into a lush green area and improved the sanitary conditions of its residents. 
the former director of the Cleansing and Landscaping Department, Ms. Rizma, acknowledged the impact of these activities and promoted the expansion of similar activities in other areas within the city. When similar composting techniques were introduced at existing composting centers and their impacts were verified, the city saw an increase in the number of new composting centers. Then, with the cooperation of women's groups and NGOs, the city distributed composting containers for use by households free of charge. This was not just the simple distribution of containers, but was a carefully thought-out process involving a system which identified an environmental leader in each area who trained residents on the composting process before receiving the containers and established a system whereby environmental leaders would monitor the use of containers after distribution. From 2005, the number of communities participating in the Green and Clean campaign, a beautification and tree planting competition between communities, increased to almost 2,000. This campaign is promoted primarily by the environmental leaders in each area in cooperation with private businesses and local newspapers. What we would like to point out here is that while Surabaya uses about 1 billion yen per year for collection, transport and treatment of waste, of that amount, the construction and operation of composting centers and other activities, such as the distribution of household composting containers, accounts for approximately 1 to 2 percent of this. Therefore, if other cities can effectively use 1 to 2 percent of their waste management budgets, there is potential to achieve a substantial reduction in the amount of waste generated. In addition, the costs incurred for the construction of composting centers and the distribution of household composting containers can be recouped from the decrease of related expenses resulting from reductions in generated waste and providing alternatives to the purchase of chemical fertilizers. Calculations show that the composting of organic waste has controlled the emission of about 10,000 tons of carbon dioxide per year. Assuming that one ton can be sold for 1,000 yen, this is equivalent to an income of 10 million yen per year. Similar activities to those in Surabaya have also spread to other cities. Cities in Indonesia include central Jakarta, Palembang, Makassar, Balikpapan, Tarakan, and Semarang, among others. Cities in the Philippines include Bago, Cebu, Talesay, and Puerto Princesa, among others. Cities in Thailand include the capital city of Bangkok, San Kam Feng, and Sriracha, etc. In Malaysia, Cebu, Kampar, and the University of Malaya, etc. In Nepal, Lalitpur. The expansion of composting activities to these cities has been promoted through JICA Partnership Program, intercity cooperation with Kitakyushu City and Kaita, the research activities of IGES, and corporate social responsibility activities by JPEC, a member of JPower Group. Similar activities are also being expanded by Japan Overseas Cooperation Volunteers, JOCV, around the world under the umbrella of cooperation with JICA. So now, what can be done to promote the composting of organic waste and achieve a reduction in the amount of waste generated? There are three steps. Firstly, seed compost for composting baskets should be produced. Seed compost can be produced from rice bran, rice husks, fermented foods and others by mixing and fermenting them for a few days. This operation requires a roofed working space. Secondly, produced seed compost is contained in compost containers and distributed to households willing to practice composting. Here, it is important to assign a person in the community who explains how to use the composting container, monitors its use by community people, 
and troubleshoots when there are any problems. Thirdly, setting up a composting center for composting organic waste from vegetable markets and pruned twigs and leaves from parks and greenery is also recommended. This facility requires a floor space of 100 to 200 square meters and a shredder which cuts organic waste into pieces. This shredded organic waste is mixed with the seed compost in a ratio of one to one, piled up in a heap for a height of about one meter, and fermented for about two weeks to produce compost. Further, by mixing the produced compost with shredded organic waste and repeating the same process, the amounts of treated organic waste and the compost production increase gradually. The compost produced here can also be used as seed compost for composting containers. To achieve a major target such as the reduction of waste at the citywide level, it is necessary to establish a large number of such models. Therefore, a comprehensive strategy involving all stakeholders is needed with the mayor setting waste reduction targets, preparing the necessary personnel, budget and equipment so that organic waste and pruned twigs and leaves can be separately collected and made into compost, and ensuring that there are a series of mechanisms to utilize the compost, such as in green areas and farmland. While this type of strategy is necessary in the long term, at the start of activities, a pilot composting activity should be implemented with the cooperation of local residents.